What's going on YouTube? Kamikaze Von Doom here with another Division 2 video. Now shout out to the DoD Disciples of Doom. And in today's Division 2 video, I'm going to talk about why you need to make a new character right now. Make a new character right now. Now, I made a video on this a few months ago, trying to get everyone prepared for this update. Now this update is out, and I'm going to show you exactly why you should still make a new character right now. It is the fastest way to get your expertise levels up. I'm going to show you exactly how. Not only that, but I can also explain to you how you can make a new character in under two hours. Start to finish in under two hours. So if that sounds interesting, sit back, relax, grab that popcorn. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe if you're new, and let me know in the comment section below what you guys think. And thank you guys so much for your ongoing support. We have now gained 3,000 subscribers in the last month. Thank you so much. We're about to hit 42,000 subscribers probably today. So I want to thank you again for the ongoing support. This is amazing. The community's back. The game Games back. Everyone is ready. This is the beginning of year four, so we still have an entire year of content. But all right. Anyways, so this is my uh, my main character. All right. You can see in the top right of the screen, I am uh, shade level thirty one sixty. Now look right here. I have eight thousand credits. Uh, looking at my resources, I, man, I have like no resources. I, I'm out of resources too. And reason being is because of the expertise leveling system. So I'm out of materials, I'm out of credits, and it's like, fuck, man, what do you do? do? Do you just go out and just keep farming? Like, that could be mindless. You could do that for hours, for days, for weeks. And why would you do that? Just make a new character, right? Let's look at it. So log out. And I just finished this uh, this character. What I do is I wipe my fourth character. I delete them and then I re-upload them, delete them, re-upload them. And, and that's how I keep getting all this up. Now go over to my fourth character. Now you can see he is also shade level 3160. And I only have two hours of time played. And I've already finished the character. So let's load it up and I'll show you exactly what you need to do. Um, first up, whenever it loads in, I'll show you my strategy on how to beat Warlords of New York within two hours. And then we'll actually uh, talk about why you need to make a new character. But okay, so let's see if it'll actually pull up. Oh no, it's just going to pull up the manhunt. All right, so before this, it would pull up Keener. Now, this is how you do it. So at first, you don't have the safe houses. So whenever you finish the Kelso opening sequence and you are level 31, you will have uh, four yellow dots for the safe houses. You need to go to those areas and discover the safe houses. So the first thing you need to do is get a friend of yours or call for help or whatever. Get someone else in your group that is already level 40. And then what you do first and foremost is you go to each of these safe houses. You talk to the, uh, the NPC that's inside the safe house. Sometimes it's a computer that you have to search, whatever it is, and then it will start the different areas for Warlords of New York. So that's the very first step. You do that and you will already gain a level of experience just by unlocking the safe houses. So you unlock the first four safe houses. Now unlocking Animal Shelter will then unlock the tombs. Unlocking residential building will unlock the JTF outpost side mission. Unlocking the food bank will unlock Wall Street. And then finally, unlocking Trinity Church will unlock the side mission um, Carry Tunnel. Okay. So, first thing you need to do is get a full group of people. You would have one person start the tombs by themselves. You, would, uh, you and another person would go to the JTF outpost right outside of the, uh, what safe house is this, residential building. So one person starts tombs. While they are starting tombs, you and another person will do the JTF outpost because once you complete that side mission, it will unlock Stranded Tanker. And then your fourth person will go over to the food bank 
and then uh, run all the way over to Wall Street. But if he's already level 40, they can just fast travel to these main missions. So then have your fourth person start Wall Street. Now, that means you are doing three different missions at once. And this is how you cut a lot of that time out of the way. So you and your buddy finish JTF Outpost, and that will start Stranded Tanker. Have whoever was with you start Stranded Tanker, and then you fast travel to the tombs. Beat the tombs, and then you and... Uh, and then um, you fast travel to Wall Street and beat Wall Street with that other, with the fourth person. Now, while you go to Wall Street, you will have one person on Stranded Tanker, and then the other one is actually going to knock out the police uh, depot or whatever that's called, the side mission, right when you're done with the tombs. So then you beat Wall Street, you fast travel back to the police depot or whatever that side mission is called. Finish that side mission, and then you can go to Stranded Tanker and finish that. Now, as you are finishing Stranded Tanker, one person will run over to the Carry Tunnel side mission. And let me think. And then the other person, when you're done with Wall Street, it will open up the Pier 26 side mission, and then you'll have that person do that. So... Now you are at Stranded Tanker finishing that mission with the other teammate. As soon as you're done with Stranded Tanker, that will finish these two areas completely. You're already done, okay? So as soon as you're done with those two, fast travel to Pier 26 and have whoever was at Stranded Tanker start um, the carry tunnel side mission with that other person. Finish Pier, then go to the carry tunnel and then that will unlock the Pathway Park. Once you do that, you're done with everything. You just have to finish Pathway Park. So then all four of you can fast travel to Pathway Park, knock that out, and then it will finally unlock Liberty Island. This can be done in an hour to an hour and a half, depending on your teammates and how good of builds they have. Today, we did it in under two hours, and two of my teammates were running Heartbreaker. Um, but side note, shout out to Ghost, Banshee, and Walker for helping me go through this today. Anyways, so that's how you do it. So it's a Tombs, Side Mission, Police, JTF, Mission, Stranded Tanker. Over here, it's the Carry Tunnel, and then Pathway Park. And then here, it is Wall Street and Pier 26. Now, you, don't, you can't just go to Liberty Island after Pathway Park. There's going to be another side mission over here called Castle Clinton. Now, once you defeat Castle Clinton, you can then go over to Liberty Island, and then you're done. So it's uh, one, two, three, four, five side missions, and one, two, three, four main missions to unlock Liberty Island. So it's five and five total. So you can do all 10 missions within an hour, hour and a half, depending on your team. But like I said, you have to coordinate this. You know, hey, one of you go to Tombs, I'm going to go to JTF Outpost, one of you go to Wall Street. Knock that out. All right, whoever helped me, go to Stranded Tanker. I'll go over to Police after he's done, um, after we're done with Tombs. And then I'll run over to Wall Street and finish Wall Street. When he's done with Tombs, have him jump over to the Carry Tunnel. When you finish Wall Street, uh, do Pier 26, and then jump over to the Carry Tunnel, finish Carry Tunnel. As soon as that happens, you fast travel to Stranded Tanker, help your buddy finish that, while the other two people are at Pathway Park. As soon as that is done, whoever's helping you with Stranded Tanker needs to run over to Castle Clinton. You finish Pathway Park with your buddies, everyone goes to Castle Clinton, and then everyone goes to Liberty Island. It's pretty easy. I've just explained it twice. So if you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section below because I don't want to keep you know, repeating it. I, I understand it's a lot of knowledge to get down and there is a certain uh, structure, certain mechanic that you have to do. You know, Tell someone to go over here while you help people over here because you have to be at every single mission when it's completed. That way you get the XP. And the only way to start Liberty Island is if you are level 40. So let's say you are not level 40 and you've completed all of these missions. 
then you have two side missions you can do. You can do, uh, what's this, uh, Dower Street and then New York Federal Reserve. So you have these two side missions that you could do to get to level 40, but you can be level 40 as long as you get all that XP from all of those missions. And then once you finish Liberty Island, that's it, you're done. You will spawn back here at the Haven. You will be level 40, and it'll say here, it's prompting me to open up Keener's Watch. I haven't even opened up Keener's Watch. I've just been sitting here. Okay, so that, that was quite a bit to explain, so I hope you guys get it. Um, if you found that helpful or informative, please hit the thumbs up, support the channel. It really does help me out. Okay, so here's the other crazy part. So now you know how I did Warlords of New York within two hours. So let's talk about why. Why did I do this? Why would you possibly do Warlords of New York over and over and over, Kami? What the fuck, man? Well, it's simple. And it's all about this damn watch level, people. It's all about this watch level. So I haven't even unlocked this watch yet. So you're about to see this real time. All right. Here we go. Administrator override complete. Yeah, give it to him. Come on. Encrypted subroutines detected. Analyzing. Decryption complete. Subroutine compromised. Root directory compromised. Subroutine unlocked and synchronized. Additional encrypted subroutines. There, detected. there we go. So now I have unlocked the watch. Root Pretty sure. Root directory compromised. All right. So here's the fun part. Yo, shut up. Are you done? Subroutine. Oh my god. Unlocked. They're still talking to me. Full subroutines unlocked. Are you done, Isaac? I'm trying I'm trying to do a video here. Come on. Oh my god. In progress. Oh. Are you done? Okay. All right. So right here you can see at shade level 3160, that gives me 2360 scavenging points now you don't have to upgrade your attributes unless you are keeping this character i usually don't upgrade these attributes because i'm not going to use the character this is purely my expertise leveling mule if you will so go over to scavenging this is very important okay you can max out each of these and share them across all of your other characters. You cannot share the credits. So let me get you to uh, see why credits are also important in this game. Okay. So let me get eh, a couple hundred thousand. There we go. We're at 200,000 credits. Now that the okay. Threat to New York eh, shut up, Kelso. Thank you. We have oh, my God. I'm trying to do this so quick that the game's like trying to give me all of the voice comms. Don't hesitate to use them and grab some air miles. Okay. So Roy Benitez right here. Okay. Now you can see that this M60 and SASG are not fully proficient. So having these credits is vital. It will only take 20 duplicates to be fully proficient in a weapon. 20. Now you can see this one is already at proficiency rank one, right? So now I only need 18 because it only takes two duplicates to go up a proficiency level. So I need 18 of these. So what, what's that? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, right? So I come over here, and that is for the military M60. And then I go over to my crafting table, or my recalibration table, go to expertise. Now look on the left side of your screen where it says expertise level 11, and then watch this. I go to donate all junk. Boom. I just went up five. Um, I just went up five proficiency ranks just from doing that one thing so now I'm here 
And now I can go, oh, hold on. I didn't mark the M60s as junk. So come over here, mark them all as junk. There we go. And then go back, expertise, donate all junk. Boom. And now I'm at 192 out of 200. So I'm about to be expertise level 12. Now what did that do exactly? Well, let's go back over here to Roy Benitez and I'll show you. So coming back over here to Roy Benitez and boo -doo, boo -boo -doo. now my M60 is fully proficient and it was just proficiency rank one. Isn't that funny? So that's how I'm becoming proficient in all my weapons is every week these vendors change and every week each vendor has a different set of weapons. You can buy 20 of each of them depending on the ranks. Like right here, the SASG is rank one and a half, right? So instead of 20, I only need 17 to become fully proficient. You don't want to buy more than what you need. You need to understand that for every proficiency rank, it only takes two duplicates. So right here, I'm at one and a half. So that's one and a half that I don't need to upgrade. So then that's how you get, you know, your numbers. Uh, okay, so I'm at one and a half right here. So there's two, three, four, oop, and then I'm out of credits, right? And then go over here. You have thousands of scavenging points. You can do this all day until all of the weapons are fully proficient. You can do this all day long. Not only that, but then you can max out all of these materials and then go to the base of ops in Washington, D.C. Go to Anaya. She's right next to the crafting table. And then you can click share materials. And then all of these, if you max them out, they will then be transferred to all of your other characters and it will be added to whatever materials you already have on those other characters. So uh, we just bought some more of that. Um, let's see here. How many SASGs do I have? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I have five. So that's uh, two, three, four, level five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, right? And then don't forget, mark them as junk, okay? Because you're not going to use the SASG-12, let's be real. And then let's run back over here to the expertise table. And this is a easy way to get your proficiency ranks up and your expertise ranks. So watch this. So I'm at 192 out of 200 for level 11. Donate all junk. And now I am level 12. Check it out. Expertise level 12. And I have a long way to go because this character has another 2,323 scavenging points. So not only can I get all those materials, but then I can use all of the credits, buy all of the weapons from every vendor, and become proficient in all of them. This is a very, very easy way to get your expertise levels up in the fastest amount of time possible. It takes roughly an hour and a half to two hours to do a new character, and then you can do this as much as you you know you want now of course this is based off of your shade level so if you're a higher shade level than me you're going to get even more scavenging points however if you are a lower shade level than me you're going to have less scavenging points so just remember that i mean if you're shade level 30 you might not really be able to take advantage of this but if you're shade level a thousand you'd easily be able to take care of this okay so here's Anaya right here next to the crafting bench at the base of ops. And right here is account shared materials. I'm not going to buy this right now because I need to use my scavenging points to max out my materials. But that's where you go. You go right here, account shared materials, click on that, and it will share all of the materials you have on this character to all of your other characters. All right. So I have not only showed you how to make a new character and finish Warlords of New York in under two hours, but I also showed you why this is so important 
for your expertise leveling system. Now I'm Kamikaze Von Doom. I hope you have found this informative or helpful. If so, please hit that thumbs up. It really does help me out. And subscribe for more Division content. I will be bringing you Division content every single day, so make sure you have your notifications on. And let me know in the comments section below what you guys think. But besides that, everything said and done. I am Kamikaze Von Doom, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone. Uh-oh, I don't even have the emote on this character. Ah! Peace out, guys. See ya.